Brock and I'm a senior and I'm a triple major in classical archaeology, communications and digital studies and classical civilization. I'm Katie. I'm a junior at Mary Washington and I'm a double major in English creative writing and communications and digital studies. I'm Chris Ringham, a graduating senior. I major in computer science and I have a minor in digital studies. So my name is Jennifer Hill and I'm a communication and digital studies major and I'm a junior. I started working at the Digital Knowledge Center the end of the fall of my sophomore year. So my history with the DKC is I got hired as a freshman by Martha Burtis. She found me in her freshman seminar class. So when I first got to Mary Washington, I didn't know that the DKC existed really. Okay, so Anna who worked there, we were friends before and she said I should just apply. I'm like, well, okay. Fast forward a couple years, I actually needed help with something. Um, one of the tutors, Elena, helped me with a piece of audio, I think. Also, we worked on this very complicated uh, website that I used. It was uh, DotClear, which was like a French web-based application, which was not WordPress. But you know, we had fun working with it anyway. And she's like, well, Abby, if you know this, you can just work here. At that point, I saw how friendly and you know, what the DKC community was like, and I was like, you know, I'm really interested in this stuff and I could see myself working here. It, uh, I've seen many students come in and have like a lot of breakthroughs, and what I can say in general is it looks like instant relief. You know, a lot of the people that I see struggle, they come in and the first thing they say to me is, oh, I'm not, I'm not tech savvy. I've worked with some students who they come in and they're super stressed out and they're like, there's like a couple things that they're just on the hinge and once I show them that they are so relieved. Um, also a lot of the time I see people come in and um, they're, they don't actually need help with the tool per se, but they need help with their confidence. Some of the hardest things that happens with tutorials, it can be really a variety. It can be like maybe the professor didn't design something very well and you don't even have an understanding of what the professor wants. So when I had these students come in, it just seemed like the professor, I don't think, actually used the app itself either. I think a lot of professors, they give the what of what they're wanting out of their students, but they never really give the why from the students and like the faculty side, it just didn't look like they had enough of a basis, like what does this project aim to achieve? Well, when a student comes in and their professor has been very unclear and their guidelines are really unclear, it makes their stress just build up even more. My suggestion for making assignments for newer students is to give them more guidelines. I do think sometimes it is nice to set up a really like a really non-feasible goal for your students then to just see what happens. The information that the professors need the most, what they're actually trying, the root of the assignment, I think needs to be made very clear, it needs to be spelled out. But in order for the students to get to that point, I feel like that is where the students need freedom to work in either whatever mode they want or to really expand on whatever the assignment is to make it their own. I think it is a really fine and kind of blurry line of like leaving things open but defining things. Put themselves in the student's shoes and try to walk through it as if they were taking their own class. The most um, frustrating assignments I encounter are the ones in which you expect your students to become BuzzFeed like level digital content creators in less than like three weeks. When the assignments that a professor gives are very plug and chug, you just write a paper, put it online, but it has to be in these formats. There's not really much effort that the students are actually having to put in. It's just basically busy work. If you put guidelines on them, if you're like, oh, you can only have it like three of these and you know, two of them, and then it, this one has to start with an introduction and with the this and the that. Checklists can be okay, but really, if you make it open and let them kind of explore on their own, I think that it, it, you'll have struggles at first, but it'll kind of yield you some very interesting results. What I've seen in students that makes for the most successful outcome in a project is when they're really passionate about what they're doing. Students are used to being given that kind of time. Yes. Is that fair? I'm, I am exactly saying that.
when I was in first grade, I would always play in the sand. And I made little cities for the ants out of the sand. <laughs> and if the sand was wet, like if it had just rained a few days before, I could make bridges, and that was the best thing in the world. <laughs>